Could I have a show of hands of who was at town meeting last year? Okay. The project hasn't changed from what was passed overwhelmingly at town meeting last year, uh, but then failed miserably at the polls. So the reason I was asked here, as I understand it tonight, is to help refresh everyone's memory as to what this project entails uh, and to try to garnish more public support for the project. So you know a lot about the townhouse. Um, what you what you may not know, okay, <laughs> is how to advance. <laughs> I can just put. I can just push the button if I have to. This is. You said this was tentative, so you want to try it? Maybe it needs a direct line of sight. I don't know. The earliest image we have of the old townhouse is this one, which uh, is just a sketch and shows it as a two-story building, still with the symmetrical entrances at each end, but before the ground floor was built and the area was lifted up one story. And this is its current view, uh, more or less, although not current automobiles by any means, but. Uh, this area was added sometime in the early 19th century. We don't know exactly when that was. Cameras weren't to this country till 1839. Um, but, but initially that area was separate from the upper floors. This, uh, this is an interesting photograph because it it, I think it may predate the other one. It shows a much darker trim. It's likely that the trim was all painted white during the colonial revival era when everything got painted white. Uh, State House got sandblasted to get rid of the painted brick. Uh, it was quite a, quite a, a, a oh great, thank you. Uh, quite a disruptive time in architectural history. Uh, the, another interesting thing some of these old photographs will show is that the access into and the use of the ground floor has changed over time. There's a, the doors have moved around. Uh, here's an area down uh, at the far, uh, what I call towards the southwestern corner, showing a door to the police station. That door is no longer there. There's one door into the building now. At one point there were at least three. <clears throat> it's a current view of the uh, front facade from the southwest. A detail of the beautiful Georgian architecture with the wooden with the wooden coins, uh, the, the heavy uh, articulated windows, the six over six sash. Uh, in the rear, there's a fire escape that was built uh, at some point. There's, there's a few uh, utilities in the back. There's a flue up at the top. The entrances, uh, as far as we can tell, are original, except they're a story up from where they were before. And this is the single remaining entrance door into the ground floor, which is now in somewhat near the center of the facade. Interior, there's a ramp that feeds a, a small room downstairs. This ramp was not approved for use by the voting commission. Uh, it was put in with that intent, but the voting booths that were proposed for down there were, were uh, not allowed. The ramp is a little too steep in a few places. The, sorry, these are so dim. Uh, this is a, a view of the meeting hall on what we call the first floor. In the southeast corner of the first floor, it's an area that's used pretty much for storage, ad hoc storage. And then up on the upper level, what we call the second floor is the Grand Army of the Republic uh, museum space and exhibit space, which was first installed in the building in 1898 and has had the, uh, that presence ever since. In 1934, the uh, Habs drawings were done, the History of American Building Survey drawings were completed, and that gives us some information about how the building was used at that time. Here we see the single door into the ground floor at that point, but for the most part, the facade has unchanged. Uh, there's one vent shown at the roof. The flue is not shown, although we know it was there at that time. Um, the floor plan here uh, is, is interesting because it doesn't include the stair, which is up in this corner back here. Uh, that stair was added in 1966 uh, because when this was a police station and courtroom, and jail cells, there was no interior communication, no interior vertical circulation between the floors. The hall, um, as it was, uh, this is interesting to show this left side, or this right side, uh, what I call the east side here, uh, is that there was a, 
No, no, going. Okay, well, then we're going to have to go up. I think we'll, we'll manage with this. The east side, um, there was a small vestibule when the Habs drawings were done. <laughs> That vestibule no longer exists. This also shows, um, if you don't get nauseous, <laughs> that the stairs were only going up from this level as of that time period, as of 1934. And there is a permit application in the, in the um, building department of 1966 that talks about the reconfiguration of the stairs, which did not just build stairs between the ground floor and first floor, but also reverse the stairs that, the direction of the stairs that go from here up to the second floor. Currently, if you know the building, you go up this way and you go down that way. So they actually tore out what was there and rebuilt new stairs. In uh, 19... 34 as well, there was an anteroom and kitchen area at the, at the GAR side, the, the GAR museum is here, it's unchanged, the two doors into it are unchanged, but now this is all one open area. Now I think we need to come closer. The amount of work that's, a, that's going on here, Somebody remind me to get my wallet when I, before I leave. Um, the project does not include a full uh, addressing exterior issues. There's some pointing that needs to be done. None of that is very high or critical on the list. But it does address the most important feature that is prioritized for the building now, which is to restore it to use, to public use. The most important part about this building, I believe, is that it's been in continuous use, especially as a polling place, since, since it was uh, built. Uh, that's significant. Uh, the fact that it cannot be used for a public meeting now because of its lack of access is, is tragic. And so the intent of the project is to restore its availability for public use, for advertising public meetings, for having art auctions and gallery space and so on, all the different things that happen there. And so it's primarily related to accessibility. Accessible entrance, accessible toilet, an elevator at all three floors, meeting current accessibility regulations uh, for a historic building. And the things that are required along with that. We're going to upgrade the fire alarm system and the life safety system so that the interior is safe to use and is available for uh, everyone to use. The um, interior of the ground floor now, here's that entrance off of Washington Street. There's an office, a police museum, boiler room, uh, that interior ramp and meeting room, some old jail cells here, uh, American Legion is here, and a couple of abandoned toilets are in this area. The, the changes uh, that we're proposing are to keep the entrance right where it is um, and, and to keep the jail cells but make this kind of the museum space. Uh, accenting the former jail, have two accessible toilets, keep the boiler room where it is, the meeting room where it is, build, rebuild this ramp so it meets current regulations, and put in a three-stop small elevator, which is called a limited-use, limited accessibility elevator. The reason we want to do this is it, it fits and it also uh, enables us to put in an elevator without penetrating the roof, without changing the exterior in any way. Uh, a limited use, limited application elevator, which the acronym is a LULA, is uh, something you can use if you have no more than 25 feet of vertical travel. And it gives you some other advantages in historic buildings. You only need one square feet of venting for the hoistway instead of three. It has a lot of uh, friendly aspects for this building. On the ground floor, uh, this is the current configuration. You recall there used to be a vestibule here. In the photographs, I showed you some storage down at this end. When you look at this assembly hall with entrances at each end, this is really the area that you can use. Um, this, this sort of becomes by, by, uh, by the fact that it's got a plane started here of where the storage happens. So the changes create a wall here, create a vest, recreate a vestibule here, uh, and put the elevator here, again, away from the exterior walls so the windows can be preserved and there's no impact on the exterior. Upstairs, Right now, uh, this used to be carved up. Uh, this museum space hasn't changed over time. On this level, we're showing the, the elevator continuing up to this stage. And then 
Either this could be left open for more gallery space, you could circulate around this, or it could be enclosed for storage. Either way, it doesn't impact the building visually from the outside. It's an old uh, photograph um, showing a little bit of the roofscape and its uh, various roof penetrations over time. There's not that much of that photograph. Uh, there's a flue here, the flagpole's still there, the flue is still there, and then there's a couple of roof penetrations that are no longer there. Uh, but I show this because we do need to ventilate the elevator and we're proposing to do it through the roof. When you go up in the attic here, there's uh, none of the original roof sheathing is left. It's, the roof sheathing has all been replaced. The, f the structure is still there, but there's no historic roof sheathing that we need to concern ourselves with penetrating. <clears throat> So here's the roofscape from the north side showing the current flue and the former shadow of those two vents and the proposed elevator hoistway which would be on, on the north side of the ridge so that it's not visible or minimally visible from Washington Street and would look somewhat like uh, the former uh, central uh, ventilator that was supposedly for attic ventilation. <laughs> And then from uh, another prominent view uh, from Market Square, it shows the uh, primary entrance facade with the flue and what, the, what those two vents would have been in the past and what the proposed vent is off the center from the ridge. The cost of the project is about $675,000, which includes uh, some utility upgrades, a new electric service, new fire alarm system, interior work related to the toilets, the reconfiguration for the toilets, the elevator, the venting for the elevator, uh, new exit lights, replacing paper signs with illuminated signs, new emergency lighting so that the place is well lit in the event of power outage. Um, and again, it does not include uh, any exterior deferred maintenance that uh, we, we didn't really do an exterior building envelope survey, wasn't part of our charge, but nothing seems to be uh, at, at risk currently. So that's the project. Um.